Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you a 2013 CFL season preview. We're taking a look at the Edmonton Eskimos. We're going to break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams. But first, let's take a look back at the 2013 CFL draft to see how well the Eskimos did this past May. The Eskimos had a clear mission in mind coming into the 2013 draft, and that was to get better defensively and get better on the offensive line. I think they were able to accomplish what they came in wanting to do. Stephen Charles is a guy that I really like out of Regina. You look even down in round four, Taylor Survey out of St. Mary's, very good offensive lineman, and even getting a fullback in the draft, Smith Wright out of Alberta, 6'2", 220, helping with that goal line and short yardage offense. Now, what I like most about the Eskimos draft is that they're building on both sides of the line of scrimmage. You saw with the selection of Stephen Charles, Chris Mercer, and also Taylor Survey. These guys are building depth along that defensive and offensive front, and it's just going to help that team out in the long run. That was two sore spots last season, and they're looking to rectify that problem. The only element of the draft I didn't like, I felt as though they should have added a running back to help compete in the backfield and split time with Hugh Charles. I think there are some good backs out there. Yes, they missed on the one key back that I wanted them to select in the first round and Steven Lombala, he went to Montreal, but I think they still should have added a running back somewhere in this draft. The Eskimos get a B plus in my opinion. If Stephen Charles plays a down for them this year, this could be elevated to an A, but still making that selection and securing his rights earns them a B plus and getting those two guys on that offensive line and adding some linebackers as well. This was a very sound draft top to bottom for the Eskimos. There's a big camp battle going on between Matt Nichols and Mike Riley. Nichols got valuable time last season before a gruesome injury, completing 57% of his passes with seven touchdowns and three interceptions. He actually moved the offense when he was given the opportunity. He seems to have the leg up, in my opinion, on Riley. However, last season in BC, Riley showed flashes of what he is capable of if given the starting nod, and the Eskimos traded for him during the draft, so they really like what he brings to the table, and they're gonna give him a legit shot to win the starting quarterback job. Both guys, in my opinion, are similar players, and I don't think they can go wrong with either guy. I'm also interested to see how well both rookies, Ja'Cory Harris out of Miami and Jonathan Crompton out of Tennessee, perform in the preseason. A strong showing could yield a roster spot for either one of those guys. The running game will be spearheaded by the versatile Hugh Charles, who tallied over 1,400 yards in total offense last season for the Eskimos. I still believe Charles is better suited to be a complimentary guy, which is why I wanted them to go and address the running back position in the draft. But I think they may have what they need on the roster already. Keep an eye on free agent John White out of Utah. This is a guy that I watch a lot in the Mountain West Conference. He has solid all-around skills and may be the next man up in the backfield as the backup guy. Another backup to consider is seven-year vet Calvin McCarty, who is the Eskimos short yardage and goal line back. He's also valuable in catching the football out of the backfield. He's looking to get more carries this season. I think overall this is a sound unit, versatile unit, but I think they still need that quote-unquote bell cow guy. The Eskimos have a great mix of veteran talent and young talent. The vet talent lies in their slot back position led by Fred Stamps, the four-time All-Star, 6,100 career yards receiving, 395 career receptions and 36 touchdowns. He's definitely one of the best players in the CFL. You get a healthy Adarius Bowman returning from injury, and in 2011, he caught for over 1,100 yards and four touchdowns. And Carrie Coach, this is a guy that last year caught 41 passes, 685 yards, 16.7 yards a catch that's getting it done and seven touchdowns now what's most impressive is when you look at their receiving core the young guys Nate Cohorn was a first round pick in 2011 he had over 550 yards Shamar Chambers was a first round pick last year and contributed over four almost 400 yards and two touchdowns and Ismail Bamba this was a guy that was drafted by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the sixth round last year out of Shearbrook, where he set all kind of records, played at North Dakota as well. So there's a lot of talent within this receiving core. And also keep an eye on Rico Wallace, 6'3", 215 pounds out of Shenandoah. This guy is another player that shattered all kind of records in college. So all in all, this is a very talented receiving core for the Eskimos. To say the Eskimos played poorly up front would be an understatement. 
Eskimo quarterbacks had no chance last season as they were sacked 48 times, which was the league worst. It also hindered the running game from reaching its full potential. So revamping this unit was priority number one coming into the offseason and going into 2013. One player that had a start last year returns, and that's the mammoth 6'11", 340-pound Matthew O'Donnell. And in my opinion, he'll get pushed from one of the 2013 rookies, whether it be Chris Mercer or Taylor Survey. And we look at the other tackle, there's a great one over there, in my opinion. Oren Thompson played well last season, and he's back 100% and healthy and ready to go. There's a new starter at center as well, and that's Gord Hintz. He was a 2009 draft pick, and he's played sparingly so far in his career. Brian Ramsey is a guy that also started some games last year. He's going to man the guard position. So overall, when you look at the success of this offense, it really hinges on the success of this revamp offensive line. If they can block, we know they have the talent on the flanks to get the job done. Defensive tackles Ted Lauren and Amando Sewell are both entering their third season after having breakout 2012 campaigns. Both guys combined for 49 tackles and 12 sacks. And the Eskimos also signed star defensive end Odell Willis, who has 40 career sacks and is one of the best defensive players in the league. Now you add a healthy Marcus Howard to the mix, and that gives the Eskimos a potent and high-octane pass rush. However, teams won't have to throw the football if they can't stop the run like they did last year. Last year, they gave up a league-worst 126 yards a game. That definitely has to improve if they want to get to where they want to be. The hope is that 2013 second-round draft pick Stephen Charles can step in and help out with that run defense and also provide some pass rush from the interior as well. But unfortunately, he signed a free agent contract with the Tennessee Titans. But there's still a chance that he can help out the S this season by being on this roster. He may not make the Titans squad, but he's definitely a very good player and they need him day one. Also, defensive tackle Don Aramacion is another promising player looking to build on what he did last year. Very good 2012 season, and this is a guy that had 25 tackles and five sacks. This is a very sound group of linebackers that will greatly benefit from better defensive line play. When you look at TJ Hill, JC Sherritt, Damaso Munoz, they are very good starters. Hill started last season as a sandbacker, and he excels in coverage. Munoz is a guy that was pretty good as well. 55 tack, I'm sorry, 85 tackles and five sacks. He's a very good blitzer. And middle linebacker J.C. Sherrod is just in his third year and has already accumulated over 200 tackles and six sacks. Getting it done. The former Eastern Washington product and standout also had five interceptions last year. Keep an eye on free agent signee Rennie Curran. In my opinion, he's in the mold of Munoz, and I think he'll be a very good rotational guy to have on his roster. In 2013, rookie third-round pick Kyle Morris out of St. Mary's is also a very good prospect that possesses the great size at 6'3", 232 pounds. Again, this is one of the more underrated cores in the league as far as linebackers are concerned. The pass defense gave up a lot of yards last year and was also a source, but although they had some bright spots, we'll talk about that in a second, but they went out in free agency and rated what Hamilton had to offer. Marcel Young, 6'2", 208 out of Jackson State. Outstanding defense. In fact, I think he's going to do fine in that secondary, as well as Chris Rabukamba as well, coming over from the Tiger Cats. I think both guys will instantly upgrade the back end of the defense. When you look at their safety position, Donovan Alexander had four intercepts last year and was named to the West All-Star team. And keep an eye on second round pick in 2011, Hugo Lopez. I think he's ready to push for a starting spot or at least more playing time in the defense. Halfback Chris Thompson is one of the best halfbacks in the league. This guy has 26 career interceptions, 15 of which are with the Eskimos. Definitely has the ball skills. Any pass, any errant pass that's coming his way, he will pick it off and get positive yards with it, as well as Joe Burnett, a cornerback that had six interceptions as a rookie, two intercept return for touchdowns, and he was also voted to the Canadian Football League All-Star team. So this unit has some ball hogs back there. They just need the help from that defensive line to get pressure to call some errant throws so these guys can take advantage and get the ball back for their offense. The kicking game is solid, in my opinion, for the Eskimos. You look at Grandshaw hitting on 76% of his field goal attempts, even a 50-yard boot he had last season. Also was a punter, averaged 39 yards a punt. And we look at their regular punter, Brooke Dales. He averaged 40 yards a kick and had a long of 65. Now, the return game is in great hands with Joe Burnett, 
This guy had over a thousand combined yards and averaged 20 yards of kickoff return. We know he has the speed to take it the distance. Teams routinely try to kick away from him, and he finds his way with the football. He can also improve on his punt return yardage, which was at 8.8 .8 yards of punt return. If he gets that up to like 12 to 15, that could be really dangerous. The road to the Great Cup for the Eskimos goes as follows. They need consistent play from the quarterback, whether it's Mike Riley or Matt Nichols. Whoever's going to be back there has to play consistent all season long. And number two, vast improvement on the offensive line. They really need to protect better so the running game can get out there and get going. And also the passing game can flourish. There's a lot of talent at the receiving position. They have to have the time in the pocket to get the ball to those receivers. And third, they have to play better team defense that's stopping the run that's also playing better in the pass defense department if they can do that the Eskimos can definitely find themselves in Regina in November I have the Eskimos finishing fourth in the West Division and despite all of the defensive woes they had last year as far as yardage is concerned you can't sit there and say their defense didn't give their offense a chance to win. Now let's see if the offense has caught up to the defensive playmaking ability. And if so, this team can definitely find themselves out of the cellar and making a push for the West Division. There's a lot of talent. They just need consistency. But right now, I think there's too many question marks going into 2013 that I just don't feel comfortable putting them ahead of other teams in the West. And also, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Eskimo Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.